Today on the channel, I'm going to be taking apart an Xbox 360. I'm going to disassemble it and I'm going to clean it out. You want to watch how I do it? Stay tuned till the end. For now, let's get going. So first step's pretty simple. It doesn't require any tools. You just got to take the hard drive off. There's a little button on the top. You push down on the button and then you pull up on the hard drive and away from the button and the hard drive will swing right off the top. Next step does require a tool. You got to pry the faceplate off. Generally speaking, when I'm working with plastic, I tend to not want to use sharp metal tools. A lot of people will use a jeweler screwdriver here. If you're really careful, no problem. I find that uh, using rounded tools or tools that are made of wood or tools that are made of plastic, that tends to be a little bit safer. It keeps me from making a mistake, marring the plastic, gouging the plastic, cracking the plastic, because they're just a little bit softer and if they're rounded they're less likely to scratch. As you know if you watched the channel before I like to use tongue depressors. I got a whole bag of them. I'll put a link in the description below to where I got them. But there just so happens to be right at the foot of the faceplate here a perfect hole to insert a tongue depressor. So I put it in there and I just start sliding it all the way around. Turn the corner, go up the side, go around the back, come down the other side, boom, off pops the faceplate. You can do it any way you want. You can stick your fingernails under there or you can stick a jeweler's screwdriver in there if you're really careful. Any way you choose to do it, the faceplate just pops off. And here's what it looks like under the faceplate. You can see the infamous warranty seal there. So once your faceplate is off, you've got the top and the bottom plate to contend with. These are a little bit harder. This is the plate that sits below the hard drive when the hard drive is installed. And it's pretty simple. Here I have another top plate to show you. There's some holes that you can access through this little step here. And then just inside the holes, about an inch and a half past the holes, there are a couple of little plastic wings. You wanna get a tool in there, preferably something pretty solid, but nothing too sharp that could damage the plastic inside. So what I wanna do, I wanna put my tool into this hole and I wanna scoop that little tab and I wanna push it in towards the center of the Xbox 360. So as you can see, I'm going to take my little tool here. This is a beautician's tool. It's meant for removing pimples, that kind of thing. But it's actually a really good tool for doing this kind of solution. If you're interested in these kind of tools, I'll put an Amazon link in the description below. So this little scoopy one here is pretty good for inserting into the hole. And then as you can see, I'm just going to grab onto the outside of that little tab and I'm going to lever it in gently to the middle. I don't want to break it. I just want to move it in a little bit and get it to pop free from its little clasp. Same thing on the other side. Sometimes they come off together, sometimes they don't. A little upwards pressure and you're good. The way you release the other four, you can see there are little filled in holes that sort of make a tapered, almost V shape. And if you get something that's small enough to poke into those holes, you can find the dead center of that little V shape, push in, and you'll be pushing on the tab and the, the top will release. For me, I'm gonna take a blunted bamboo skewer because again, it's made of wood, it's a little bit soft, it likely won't mar or crack or damage the plastic tab inside. And it fits perfectly into this hole. I took the sharp edge off of it, I just blunted it a little bit for safety. Just find the right hole, give it a poke, and up comes the top. Do the same thing on the other side. The last two sort of at the back of the top of the Xbox are a little bit tricky. One side is easy to get. The other side's a little bit trickier because where I want to put the bamboo skewer is actually under this foot. So I just pull the foot off. It reveals a hole. I poke my little skewer into that hole and that's the last of the six clasps released. And now the whole top plate's released. You can see there's some dust under there. Not too bad. Could be worse. So now I've flipped the Xbox over. I've got to release the bottom plate, which is facing down when the Xbox is in its vertical position. But it's the same kind of deal. You look for the two filled in holes. You go dead center between them. You go down as far as you can. Poke your implement in there. That'll release the tab. Same thing on the other side. Bit further down the Xbox. Up, oh, some more filled in holes. Poke my implement in there. Release the clasp. Same thing on the other side. Boom, and four of my six clasps are released. Now down to the end, same deal. Look for those two filled in holes in the top row. Push in, release that clasp. Same thing on the other side, and away she goes. So now I have to release the sides of the Xbox. The top and the bottom are off, the faceplate is off, and that reveals these little clasps that grab the sides to each other at the front. There are three obvious ones and one that's a little bit harder to see at the bottom. Again, I'm gonna use my tongue depressor here. It's pretty simple. I'm just gonna wedge it in between the clasp and the tab, put a little bit of separating pressure and separate the two halves. Down at the other end, same thing. Insert the tongue depressor between the clasp and the tab, a little bit of separating pressure, both sides separated. If only it were as easy on the other side. It's not, I'll tell you that much, but it seems to be the other side of the Xbox, the side I'm gonna show you now where people have the most trouble. And this is where if you had an Xbox 360 opening tool, it would be 
in its glory. You can see there's these little holes. One, two, three, four, five little holes. And really all you have to do is apply some separating pressure and just push into those holes with a very small implement. For me, I'm gonna use one of those beautician's tools again. And when you push into those holes, you'll hear a little pop and that'll let you know the clasp has released. The problem is there's so many of them and they're in line with one another. So as soon as you release one and move to the next one, if you're not careful, the first one will reconnect and you end up fighting yourself. That's why the tool allows you to release all five of these at once. Believe me, unless you have the tool, you probably don't have something in your arsenal, in your toolbox, in your garage that's gonna help you with this. You can go one at a time. It, it really will work, but it takes a little bit more futzing. You just wanna be really patient here. This is a place where you can seriously damage the plastic because the hole is so small, right? And if you start prying, well, I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm not gonna pry. I'm just gonna put my implement right into the hole and push straight in. And with a lot of time and a little patience, I figure out a way to separate this side of the Xbox. This one wasn't easy. I've done ones that are much easier. This one really fought me, I gotta tell you. But as you can see in this shot, when you separate them, it becomes much clearer what each of those little tabs does. It's just a little wing on the end of a tab. All you're trying to do is get that to pop out just a little bit so it releases. And so now the side of the Xbox can come off and that reveals this plate, which has a number of screws in it. There are only six that I wanna release now. They are the six long screws that connect the other side of the Xbox, the other piece of plastic, which right now is sitting on the bottom, to the chassis of the Xbox. So once I release these six screws, I'll be able to remove the other side of the plastic. It can get really confusing because there's so many screws. You really only want to take out six, these six. If you pull out a screw that's one inch long, you pulled out the wrong one. These screws are quite long. You can see them here. They're T10 Torx screws. So you gotta have that screwdriver or bit. Before I proceed any further, I'm gonna take the eject button out. So I just get my uh, tongue depressor in there, give it a little wedge and pry it directly away from the face of the Xbox. And the eject button just pops right off. I'm gonna put that somewhere safe. And now that the screws are released and the eject button is off, I'm free and clear to remove the other side of the Xbox with nothing to hold it in place, lifts right off and reveals the inside of the Xbox. Cool. So I can see right away that this particular Xbox 360 is pretty clean. I've seen some that are just caked on the inside with dust and dirt. It's a good practice with any computer to open it up and remove the dust. And that's what I'm gonna do next. So first step is pull out the optical drive and it's held in place with this little silver seal. I think I'm just gonna pull it. And then the drive just pulls straight up. There are two cables that connect it to the motherboard of the Xbox. There's one for power and one for data. I just pinch them, give them a little wiggle, out they come. I try not to pull by the cables. I try to pull by the plug. Never pull by the cable. Always pull by the plug. And once the cables are released, I can pull the drive away and put it off to the side. Next, the fan shroud. The fan shroud makes sure that the fans in their sucking action are pulling as much heat off the fins of the heat sink as possible. You want them lined up perfectly without gaps around the heat sink or anything like that, because that would be like having a hole in the hose of your vacuum. You don't want that, it's not gonna suck as well. So the shroud, you wanna make sure when you put it back, you put it back in exactly the right configuration. I'm just gonna pop this little tab in, lever my tool towards the center of the Xbox, that releases the tab, and pull the shroud. It's a little dirty, I'm gonna give it a clean. And underneath the shroud, I see the fans. The fans are pretty dirty, obviously. The plug that powers the fan has a little clasp on it. This isn't the greatest shot of that. It's really easy though. I just put my little tongue depressor in there, give it a little twist, and out pops the plug. And then the fan is held in place with two little clasps. You can see the little black nubs sticking up into the metal housing that pinches the fan down towards the motherboard. There's a couple of ways to do this. I find just pushing up on that piece of metal releases the clasps from the fan, pull the fan towards the heat sinks and up and out. Then it's ready to be cleaned. Now, as you can see, generally, there's a, a, just some dust that's sort of accumulated on the motherboard and on the heat sink fins. First, I'm gonna give it a brush with a soft bristle paintbrush here. This is only used for cleaning boards. I don't use this for painting. And I just sort of gently dust all the components and the motherboard right into the corners, any nook and cranny where there's some dust, I try to loosen it up. Oftentimes I'll blow it out with my compressor or some canned air, but uh, in this case, this one's not so bad. I might just skip that step. And then I will put some isopropyl alcohol on the end of the brush and I'll give sort of a mop to the motherboard and any component that's in there. Just sort of a final clean that makes sure the board is really clean 
any connections are clean. While you're in there, you're probably thinking, hey, I gotta work on the optical drive. A lot of people have trouble with the belts of their optical drive, or sometimes the drive gets dirty and doesn't read the discs properly. I'm gonna focus on the optical drive as a second video next week, so be sure to come back and check it out. And with that, I'm pretty much done. I'd show you the reassembly, but it's everything I did in reverse. But at this point, I feel pretty confident with this Xbox. It looks pretty good. I know on the inside, it works pretty well. Put a disc in, it spins up no problem. It plays the disc. Hard drive, same thing. And you can tell, if you did a good job cleaning out your Xbox, it'll be quiet. This one didn't sound bad before. I think it's a little quieter now. But if your Xbox sounds like a helicopter or a jet airplane or something, might be that it just needs a cleaning. So I hope that helped you out. If it did, please feel free to like or subscribe. Liking and subscribing can really help a channel. And if you could do that for this channel, I'd really appreciate it. It. And otherwise, until next week, take care, stay safe, have fun with your DIY projects, especially the Xbox 360 ones, and I'll see you next Saturday.